I, I got up, uh, you know, when somebody, when you, when you have, when you tend the cattle or whenever you, you're a caretaker and, and uh, something like that happens, boy, it just eats at you. And uh, I didn't come out here last night. It kind of sired my whole stomach whenever I got all that done and, and just, I, I don't want to say I was worrying because you're not supposed to worry, cause you, but I felt stupid. I mean, I felt bad. You know, and I'm, I can be pretty hard on, on my kids. And I'm pretty hard on my spouse. I'm pretty demanding for anybody that has to work with me. They, you ask Chris or Brad and them, I mean, I, I can be pretty hard to, but I'm pretty dead gum hard on myself. And uh, I called Ronnie this morning. I said, man, I'm such a stinking idiot. He said, well, why are you so stupid? <laughs> Man needs a few good friends. <laughs> but I and then I but I just man I, I was there at daylight trying to get them calves to you know just I don't know what I could do for them, but uh, I tell you God has sit right here and just just broke my heart because that's man we need to, we need to drink of Him. We need to drink all the water. Man, man, what a great sermon that's going to be if I ever get it off. Man, I'm telling y'all, I, we got to have, we got to have, he is the living water. He is the bread and the water of life. And I'll tell you something, when you visually watch something that has just about reached death without water, and you're the cause of it. Now, I wasn't even in town, but I'm responsible for them kettle. Then you, when God shows you you're a pastor and you got people sitting in your church that's dying without my water. I just about can't get up here and preach because it breaks my heart, and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to. I don't know how. I don't know how to get it out. I don't know where to find it at. But I know, I just know, man, he's the water. Oh, and he don't want none of us to be thirsty. Somebody in your life, man, shut the gate a long time ago, but I'm telling you the gate's open. The wind may have blown. Some idiot may have come by and shut it thinking they was being cute. I don't know how it got shut. I have no idea how the gate got shut on them yearlings where they can't get the water. I don't have, I mean, I mean, I mean, it happens, right? Somebody shuts the gate on us and we turn our back or we get hurt and we don't, never, we don't even remember that there's water in that pen. There's water in this word right here. There's, there's healing water, living water. I'm telling y'all, I am throwed off. Ugh. I'm going to preach a little bit today about time. And, and, and after last Sunday when I finished, you know, I got home and I thought, I don't know if that was an encouraging or a deflating message. As I studied on it and I thought, you know, I feel like sometimes, man, just the day just ain't going to end. It just, I, ain't, I don't even know if I'm going to get through the day. And then I stood up here and preached that we was a bunch of sissies because it's only like, what, 10 seconds long? Because to the God, a day is a thousand years, you know? And then it spun on me. And I went, no, no wonder we think this day won't never end. Because if a day is like a thousand years, sometimes that day's got to be long. Now, yeah, it can be, I mean, you know, I said, well, Lord, sometimes that day just don't, you don't think this will ever end. I know there's so many of y'all that are struggling, have lost precious loved ones, or are in, are in, Marital problems or, you know, just we, this world's full of trouble and sorrow and pain. And I know that, that sometimes it feels like it ain't never going to end. I want to tell you, just like God sits up there and God sees us and sees everything in a different time than we do, right? God sees everything as eternally. I, he opened my eyes that one of the things that Jesus came down here to this earth so that we could have somebody to follow and somebody to help us through these times is Jesus Christ in the flesh dealt with time like me and you have to deal with time. I want you to know Jesus struggled with time. Time was a burden to Jesus. Time was pressure on Jesus. And people use time to put pressure on you. I never thought about that. I've never thought that time has that much power, that much, I mean, there's a certain amount of struggle. You know, last week I mentioned rodeos and how time was so important in rodeos and how 
winning and losing comes down to just a fraction of time. I mean, just a hundredth of a second between getting a check and getting nothing. Just, a, 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 just that much from covering and getting an eight-second high-point bull ride and nothing. And I thought, well, there's a lot of pressure with, with that time, you know. You back in the box and you know you got to run this steer in seven or less to get a check, and you broke, you know, the check you paid entry fees with is going to bounce, and you, you got to feel some pressure. I got to get out of here. So you got you to gotta read on top of the barrier, but you can't break the barrier, right? I thought, man, that's some great pressure. I, I have no idea how that must feel because I don't rope good enough to even be in, never in the running for a check. And then I thought, but you know what I think is the more pressure? When you back in the box and you know all you got to do is have a clean run. When you, go, when you back in there and go, if I just catch and turn and we pick up and a healer picks up two, we're, we win the money. I mean, I think that's probably more pressure. I know, say at a PBR, when you get on your last bull in the short go and all you got to do is cover, it don't matter if it's 60 points. All you got to do is ride him and you win. And you're supposed to ride him because you done rode him three times and everybody that gets on him rides him. I think that's when you probably go, oh, my goodness. I cannot get bucked off here. I wouldn't know. I've never made the short go. <laughs> but I think there's a, I mean, I think, I, I, ain't it ironic how sometimes when the pressure should be off, the pressure's more? Whenever you're thinking, I, I, I got this, oh my gosh, if I don't got this, I'm going to look really bad. I mean, I, 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 I can't tell you how many times you talk to guys that rope and, and they're real good at roping and, and they'll say, man, I was high call back. All we had to do was turn him and be clean and get the check. And they break the barrier, leg a steer, or miss him completely. And you're like, man, I, there's something about whenever the pressure's off of you, pressure gets intensified, and it still has to do with time. So I want to focus on how Jesus handled time, and I want you to understand when we get through, I hope y'all understand my whole purpose of doing this deal on times is I want us to get a healthier balance of time from eternity standpoint and time in the flesh. Father time and flesh time. Now I think if we can learn to look at Father and our Father's time and how He views time, we'll feel less pressure of this world. But when we're in this world, dealing with the flesh time, the things of this flesh, the world that we're in, we need to know somebody's been here and done this. And we got an example to follow. Now I've never looked to Jesus for how I should handle things about time and my stress or, or tension. But Hebrews, is this thing cutting out real bad? Is it just me? Hebrews 4.15 says the high priest, this high priest of ours, understands our weaknesses. For he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. What that means is, no matter what you're dealing with, Jesus Christ has dealt with it. No matter what Satan throws at you, he's had it thrown at him. No matter what the world puts on you, he's, he's felt it too. So from the time, look, I don't know how many parents you see kids playing t-ball that just want to have fun and chase butterflies and their parents think they got to be Nolan Ryan. Get up there and pay attention. You know what I'm saying? We try to rush them. We ain't got time to be pacing, chasing butterflies. We come out here to play ball. You know, that kid's got all the time in the world. They don't care about the ball or nothing else. But parents put pressure on them to, to get a grip. I am the world's worst at putting pressure on a horse. I said with y'all last week how I got mad at that horse, pulled it over. I had to apologize to the owner of the horse after church. Can you believe that? I, I got, but you know, you know what? I mean, you, anybody that's ever trained and worked on horses, they'll tell you, you don't go fast because you'll blow that son's mind up. Well, if a horse has been on twice and it's a little bit skiddy when you go to step on him and you get mad and jerk it over backwards and stomp on his head, uh, not stomp. <laughs> Shoot. Get his attention. You're going to blow his mind. That horse is the second time it's ever been rode. It didn't know what I was trying to do. I'm bad to rush something and put pressure on something because I don't think it's moving fast enough. I will, you know what I'm saying? I'm bad about that. I told y'all about Casey trying to polish this dead gum bearing, this uh, cylinder on that tractor, and I'm like, that's good enough. It's not a watch. It's not an engagement ring. <laughs> Let's go. No, no. You know, I mean, I'm bad to rush. I'm always in a hurry. So, so I got to thinking, okay, how, how do I help? How does Jesus show me not to allow things to rush me, not for me to get rushed, 
not for me to feel pressure under how much time it's taken, how much time, you know, if I do something one time and it goes good and I get it done in 30 minutes, I am tore up from the floor up when I go back to do it again and it takes me an hour and a half. There ain't no reason this should take this long. I done done this 52 times. I should be, this should be, you know what I'm saying? And if I know my brother does it that fast, I'm really mad. You know, I mean, I, I, I can't go rope with anybody that can really rope because if I back in the box and I track them down the pen three or four times and they don't have to say a word, but they come out and go, Shh, poof, I can't not go, Shh, poof, and I don't catch nothing. But I rush myself because I look at how they rope and I go, shoot, I got to, I, I got to, I can out rope. Alex owns a tire shop. You hear me? Alex, Alex, he ain't no cowboy. I mean, he don't work horses. He don't ride a horse all the time. I, I can't. And that song, poof. So I'll be like, I got to do this. Y'all talked me into getting on that bronc two years ago with the truck wagon races? <laughs> Pressure, you know. You can do this only eight seconds. You can do anything for eight seconds. So you know, you know the biggest mistake I made? I asked Walker White, what should I do? Get in that bronc saddle and bear down. Kick and lift. All you got to do is kick and lift. You know what he should have said? Get the worst range saddle you can find and duct tape yourself. <laughs> Tie things together. Whatever you got to do, cheat. Preacher, cheat. You're going to look bad. You're going to look real stupid. You're not going to last a second and a half if you come out here like me. But I want to look like Walker knows how to ride saddle bronc. I, I, I can do that. Shoot. The pressure got on me, so I've caved. If you look in John chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it says, The next day there was a wedding, a celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, They have no more wine. Anybody feel a little time pressure coming on? Look, they ain't really drunk yet. Now, I'm just rednecking it for you. They're having a big party, and they're running out before they reach the high point of the night. Now, I don't know what the high point was, but they're running out, and we need to fix it. So Mary comes to Jesus and says, look, the celebration's going to have to end early. We just figured they're not going to have enough wine to fulfill their time. We need to, they need some wine, and Jesus' answer was, dear woman, that's not our problem. My time has not yet come. Now I want you to think about that. Mary knows Jesus is the Son of God. She knows Jesus can do whatever Jesus needs to do, right? So Mary, his own mother, puts pressure on him to start performing miracles so that she can save the day. Now I don't know how else to say it. Now maybe that wasn't her intentions. I'm not saying that's what at all. But most all of us parents that really want our kids to hit home runs at that, that gum t-ball is so we feel better about us and our kids. The kid don't care. So, and I know Jesus ain't a little kid playing t-ball. Don't, get me, don't, don't mis misunderstand me. But Jesus wasn't there to make wine. Most importantly, it was not time for Jesus to reveal who Jesus truly was. My time has not yet come. However, he honored his mother and saved a reputation by making wine. Jesus was in tune with God's timing, not his mama's timing. I think a lot of us need to find, be able to find God's timing in our life, not our mama's and our daddy's and our jobs. And It's a struggle. Jesus also knew just because you can don't mean you should. Now, I'm horrible at that because if I know I can, I know I will. But just because you can don't mean you always should. If you look again in John 7, verses 28 through 30, it says, While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he called out, Yes, you know me, and you know where I come from, but I am not here on my own. The one who sent me is true, and you don't know him, because I know him, but I know him because I came from him, and he sent me to you. Then it says, the leaders tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his time had not yet come. So if you know God's timing, and you're in God's timing, guess what you get? God's protection. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you're in God's timing, and you're in God's will, God will protect and provide all you need. Now it's hard, I, it's, I didn't say it was easy, I said it was amazing. You with me? 
I want you to understand the biggest struggle I think Jesus had with time. Remember, Jesus came from heaven, put on flesh, dwelt among us, and was going back to heaven. How would you like to have been in heaven, known everything, seen everything, been, created everything, was there with everything, and give up everything to come down here and have nothing? Knowing as soon as you got done down here, you're going back to everything. Now think about it. How many of y'all would have stayed till the Father's time? Not near one of you. You'd have got down here and spent 30 minutes and went, shoot. Fast forward. Y'all got DVRs now. You can't even watch a show in the timeline, much less follow God in time. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a, on the plane coming back from Kansas City, and I'm reading this book, and I'm horrible at reading, but it, I'm trying to read, and, and I end up handing my phone, my book to this lady. I fall asleep. When I wake up, she's at the back, 210 pages. I'm like, oh, my gosh. She said, I skip all that in the front. I go straight to the back. <laughs> you know I mean? And then she goes to telling me how, what happens. I, I, don't need, I don't need the book back now. You know? But I'm thinking about that. Would, I would do that. That's what I would do. If, if, if I would have been Jesus, and I knew this is what I had to do, I've got to come down there and I've got to teach. I'm going to try to help these young ones, and they ain't going to get it. I got to walk everywhere I go. I can't ride a good horse. I got to wear sandals. And a, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, okay, Lord, I'll do it. Yes, Father, I'm headed, but we're going to get her done. I mean, half of you got get her done on the back of your truck. Get her done. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's our mentality. But Jesus knew where he came from, knew what he had to do, and knew it had to be done on his Father's time. And he was willing, able, and disciplined to not rush it. And he knew he was protected within it. He was teaching and saying things in the temple that would get him arrested, get him killed. He feared no man because he knew God's time. And he was waiting. Now, I don't know that he knew the exact date or the... I mean, I don't know if he... But he knew he was guided by the Spirit to know the time. He was obedient to say, Lord, when, Daddy, when you tell me, I'm ready. Now, now, we all know in the garden, he said, if it's another way, he was going to do what he had to do, and he was saying, if it's any other way, let's try another way, but no, not my will, your will be done. I mean, I'm going to do what we got to do. No matter how we got to do it, I'd prefer not doing it this way. But he, did, but he was going to do what had to be done. You with me? So he spent years, 33 years on this earth, knowing he came from heaven and was going back to heaven as soon as he got done what he had to get done. And everybody wanted him to go on and get it done. Mary was ready. She wanted him to show off and make the wine. Get that done. He, no, it's not my time. My time's not yet come. Then he's teaching and preaching. You know them disciples were telling him, you can't say that. Don't go there. You're going to offend somebody. They're going to get mad. He, he had, you know why he didn't have no fear? Because he knew he was in God's time, not man's time. Time was not. If that had been me or you either one, we'd have been nervous. Because I don't know what time you in. you like blow-up time. It'd be all on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm learning not to fear certain things. But if you, if you look on down there in, in uh, John chapter 8, verse 20. Now let's back up to verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and he said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The Pharisees replied, you are making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. Jesus told him, these claims are valid, even though I make them about myself. For I know where I come from, which was heaven. But you don't know this about me. And he said, I know where I'm going. So he said right there, I know where I come from. I came from heaven. I know where I'm going. I'm going back to heaven. So all this time here... Ain't going to affect what I'm doing because I knew where I came from. I know where I'm going. If we could ever get it that, that what John said up here this morning about them kids is they're gods given to us for a short time. To, he trusts us with them and he gives us the authority to raise them and to, to teach them and to train them. But they're his and we need to give them back. That's what Jesus said. I know where I come from and I'm here for a little while, but I know where I'm going. And then he told them, you know... He said, but you don't know this about me. You judge me by human standards, but I do not judge anyone. And if I did, my judgment would be correct. 
in every respect because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. Your own law says that if two people agree about something, the witness is accepted as fact. I am one witness, and my Father who sent me is the other. Now, I want to stop right there for just a second. It just hit me. He says, you, you, for you judge me by human standards. Do you all know what the number one human standard for judgment is? Time. Time. I guarantee you people do things at a certain moment of time that they would never do any other time. And you pass judgment on them because in that moment of time they did something that you can't believe they would do. But it's that moment of time. You have no idea where they were at in their life or what was applied upon them in life or what had happened to them in life. You have no idea there's tragedies that's been involved in their life. And because of something you, that they did in a moment of time, you pass judgment on them forever. Worse than that, you pass judgment on yourself. I'll tell you why you can't be who God wants you to be because you're still hung up on who you used to be. Satan reminds you of how sorry you was, so shame keeps you from being who God wants you to be because you still remember who you used to be. That's all about time, guys. It's all about I remember who I was, so I can't become who I am. That's all about time. God does not see you how you used to be. He always knew how he would get you to be. So he sees you how you're going to be, not how you used to be or how you are. So he don't judge. His judgment, when he passes judgment, is without flaw. Because he, he, he goes across all the time. So you don't have, listen, you judge yourself because of your time. If you would quit thinking of who you used to be, you'd be more able to be who you ought to be. But all that was was a time in your life. It ain't who I was, it was where I was. It was who I was acting like. Does that make sense? So you got to let go of that time. That time, I, man, I, I hate it. That time was ugly. That time, if it was 10, 25, I don't care how long it was. It was just a time. But you passed judgment on yourself and on your family or on your spouse for that time. And you'll, you, you can't let it go. Your judgment is not just. Because time can't factor into a true judgment. God judges the heart, not the body, not the mind, not the actions, not the sins. He judges your heart and your conditions. Now, I, I believe, I don't, I don't, man, I believe, I believe if I'd have got this this morning at 4 o'clock, I'd have some more scriptures to go with it, but, but it's just not coming. But I believe if we would learn to eliminate the equation of time, we would stop passing judgment. So much. Now, we might make a decision. Now, I'm not saying we don't make a decision. I made a decision this morning. I will make sure there is a dang good rope to tie them gates open. That set of pins won't have a gate shut on me again. I didn't pass judgment on whoever shut the gate, however the gate got shut. Or not. I made a decision. Now, I made a decision about a while ago to not drink no more, not do dope no more, not cuss and throw fits. I'm, getting on, I'm almost good on all of them above. I'm getting better. Chris Smith, what did you tell me, Tuesday? He says, this morning, he says, you know what, Tuesday, when, I'm, when I make it to Tuesday, I'll be sober and not have a drink in a year. Hey! <laughs> you know, but you know what the key is? When, you, when, when he let go of being a drunk, because he was always a drunk or used to be a drunk or acted like a drunk and decided I ain't got to be a drunk, I'm going to let go. I'm not going to look at who I used to be. I'm going to trust God and look to him to who I ought to be. We've got to learn to do that. I don't, I don't know where that came from. Thank you, Lord. I didn't know where it came from. I just, thank you, Lord. I, uh, uh, where was I at? Like, like around 19? Where is your father, they asked. Jesus answered, since you don't know who I am, you don't know who my father is. If you knew me, you would also know my father. Jesus made these statements while he was teaching in the section of the temple known as the treasury. But he was not arrested because his time had not yet come. Now this word time actually means hour. So you want to know how much Jesus is in tune with our times? His life came down to an hour. He lived 33 some odd roundabout years. Walked, worked, built stuff, done stuff, healed, saved, and it came down to an hour. You know how I know? Because in John 17 verse 1, after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that he can give glory back to you. 
So everything Jesus did, everything Jesus did, everything Jesus was sent to do, everything Jesus had to endure, everything brought him to one hour, one moment in time. One, think about it, guys. If everything you ever did and everything you ever had to do and everything you ever was asked to do and everything you was ever prophesied about you doing came down to one moment in time, how much stinking pressure would you feel? You couldn't handle it. I never thought about it, but pressure was one of the things I believe made him sweat drops of blood. He, called, he said he was in the Gethsemane, the wine press, right? Ain't that what that means, wine press? So, I mean, he was, and he was excruciating. He was in, on his face before the Lord. He was flat out prying, prying. That's crying and praying all together. Prying. You know what I'm saying? Just in anguish. I believe it's because so much pressure was. <laughs> so, much, so much pressure was put into this moment in time. And he knew. Now, think about it. I get the next time you back into the box and you're pull, you nod your head, Alex, and you, you, I want you to think about it. you won't you got you won't have no pressure. You, I don't care if it's three point five, well, ten point five. I don't know where you're at in your life, but you know what I'm saying. Think about it. Everything you ever did, ever now. Now I want to ask you another question. If Jesus had a moment in time, how much time do you think you're gonna have? We live our lives like we got all the time in the world. We live our lives like if I don't, if I don't get it done, if I don't, if I don't witness and tell that one person Jesus loves them, somebody else will come along to it. We live our lives like, listen, if Jesus had an appointed moment, appointed hour in time, you ain't got no more than he got. So you know what? I'm going to do all I can now because I think this is my time. Because I don't know if it ain't, but I know what it used to be wasn't my time. That was Satan's time in me. What I used to do and how I used to act was when I let Satan have control of my time. I, I mean, I, man. I, well, it just don't make sense, but it may be good. But I want you to understand, guys, I mean, we are to be used by the Lord, to glorify the Lord. And when you give him your moment in time, Jesus said, glorify your son so that I might glorify you. When he gives you your moment, when you glorify him, oh, my goodness. I... I wouldn't that be good? To, to, wouldn't, you, wouldn't it be good? Think about it. How many times do you go, how many pens of, how many pens of cattle do you run to, to, to finally get to back up in that box and have the high, be in the, in the high hole coming back, knowing and, and, and have the confidence to go, it's my time now, baby. You know what I'm saying? Man, I ain't never, I ain't never been there. I mean, I am never athletic. I don't know what never, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a, you know, I mean, I wasn't ever a kicker that, that jogged out on the field with, with one second left knowing I'm going to win the game. I never was the guy that didn't went to the plate and, and knowing. I, I mean, I, I played him on, in, in the yard, you know, full count, bottom of the ninth, runners on Jason at the plate. <laughs> Y'all know that Kenny Rogers song where he goes and, and the kid strikes out and he goes back. He says, I just didn't know I could pitch so good. That was me. Because I would act like I'm the batter till I couldn't hit the rock. Then I'd go, man, I'm a pitching son of a gun. But I never was that kid. I never experienced that. You with me? Not all, listen, the majority of you wasn't either. You may have lied to your kids and said you was, but you was not. You was not. There was one of them in every high school, and that's all there is. There ain't 50 of us. I mean, I went to school with some of you. You wasn't. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I go, you know what? That wasn't my time. It was not my time when I was humiliated in high school. It was not my time when I was embarrassed and whenever things happened to me in school that shouldn't be done. It was not my time whenever I struck out at the plate and carried the feet back to the dugout. It was not my time when them dead gum kids could run like a deer would outrun me on football field and I just had to watch them, oh, Lord, make him trip. It wasn't my time. But I think I found my time now. Listen, if you ain't had your moment, don't give up. Jesus had to wait and wait and wait and wait, knowing his moment was coming. Knowing, listen, if you ain't had your moment, don't quit now. It's just around the corner. I promise your moment is coming. 
And if your moment's in the past, well, I didn't like you anyway. You was a superstar in high school. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. I really do love you. I'm sorry. That's thrown off. I'm sorry. That ain't right. Y'all come on back, Gene. I want to hear that song again. I can't get out of that. I don't, but I, here's what I think. Here, here, oh, I got it now. <laughs> if, you, if you think your time has already passed and, and you know you was, you was blessed and was able to run like a deer and hit home runs and, and, and you know, you got buckles and you've won saddles. I ain't never won a saddle in my life. I ain't going to win one. I ain't, I ain't never won a buckle. I, I done decided I ain't going to do that. No, and it's not because I don't want to. I'll just be honest. It's because I can't. All right, let it go. Let it go. If you have, guess what God has for you? A bigger saddle. Just because you got it once don't mean you don't need to keep trying. When Jesus, if Jesus would have quit when he healed people, he'd have never saved us all from sin. If Jesus would have quit when he, when he healed the first one and said, yeah, I had my moment, there'd have been a whole lot of people left crippled. Right? Now, listen, don't, don't judge yourself on your time because your time is like that. If you was a hero back in the day in high school playing football, I'm proud for you. But that carries no more weight than the fact that I wasn't. Because that's in the past. It's a thing of the past. You're probably bald and fat now. <laughs> I got to quit. Y'all got to see something. I'm so sorry. God. Man, that's going to get me in trouble. Don't write that down. <laughs> hey, it's all right to have fun at church, okay? It's all right. I'll tell you something. I love y'all. I love this church. I love my Lord. We're so blessed, guys. Me and John was able to go to Kansas and, uh, and take part in a Reclaiming America rally. And, uh, you know, it, what? It, y'all like to laugh. You know, I mean, some people don't know you can laugh. They did before we got done. <laughs> God loves us. You hear me? And Jesus understands. Wherever you're at, whatever time you're in, guys, whatever pressure you're feeling, however big a fear you have of not being accepted, that's all just a little bit of time. Don't let that hold you back. And don't you judge nobody else for what little bit of time you was exposed to them. You might have been done wrong. Your parents may have done you wrong. You may have been had a first spouse that done you show enough wrong. Let that go. That was just a moment of time, guys. It was just a little bit of time. Let that go. Because if you're holding on to that time, that'll prevent you from living in this time. Oh, my goodness, I could preach now. Woo! Let's pray. And y'all start singing before I don't shut up. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. I pray, God, that... Uh, that you, I just know, Lord, you're at work. I know, Lord, that there, there's, that I just pray for a good, healthy drink of water. Lord, I, I pray for that yearling that's still in the pen. God, I don't want to drag her off. I don't want to drag nobody else off either, Lord. Oh, I'm sick of dragging people off. You are life. You are the life. Oh, Lord, if they'd come get a drink of you, they'd quit dying. Lord, we all got to die in the flesh, but we don't have to die prematurely. We don't have to give up and quit living. We, we, can, we can live, and we can live to the fullest if we just come get a healthy drink. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being compassionate and knowing how it feels to be stuck in this world for however long our time is on this world, Lord. It gets tiring. I sure thought I'd be out of here before 40. I didn't, I didn't take care of myself because I figured I was checking out at 28. I didn't have nothing to worry about. I could live fast and hard and be gone early. I was going to leave a legend, and now I'm just wow. out. I just pray, Lord, that you just, you just help us to understand that this is just a little bit of time and that you've dealt and felt with every pressure of time, the restraints of time, and, Lord, the pressure to speed up time or hold time back. I just ask God you be with us that we would look to you at all times. In Jesus' name, amen.